Mona Shuala, or Maui le Mavite, or to Rajil le Fasa Singam Bojor Papa Ukai, Papa Gima. Tigara Alitaiseo, Cabere, Camarones Escaones against Dira. Kitra la Merogo Hon de Gran Mergo Sasa, Matazia Mergo Aona. Hey, it's a matter of twelve hours, Dim Sarnus Fermat. Papa Lago Fagalagala, Papa Lago Ruatamil. I corner. Kisabucha di kiti kiti java tu kira mutu mo le fasing mo pelo banga o saragan chagi mai kwa mo sadu amu keti le ngoruri angwana liye na hey swa mo nyeti sege mo pelo samba kantel ba di mu arasi lo lo kwa mo zalona tola kadi anointing oil kantel ba di mu arasi lo alleluia ering ame life is tough. You know, sometimes people say things that they want to say because of they are living lavish, everything goes well in their lives. What Apani just said right now is an everyday struggle of many people in South Africa. They are stranded. They are doing everything in their power so that they can prosper in life, but things keep falling apart. When they are trying this, there will be another problem which is happening somewhere that they have to go and fix. When they're trying to fix that problem, there will be another problem that they have to go and fix. Is how their life will be structured forever if they don't fix certain things in their lives. He mentioned that you can be mzaloani, you can use the anointing oil, but if there are certain things which need to be done in order for your things to start moving smooth, you have to pay that debt. You have to go and fix things. In many occasions, we keep saying you have to pray about it. Jesus will fix. Look, I was once there. Lucky good enough, mom sat down with me and she told me her side of the story. And she said to me, look, if you want to go and look for your father, I'm not against it. You can go and look for your father. But what I can tell you is that I don't have enough money. I can give you, you know, this certain amount of money so that you can go and reach the destination where you want to go because you said your father is in Messina. But just pray that things will go well between you and your father. You will have an understanding and your father will give you money to come back to Johannesburg. I was once there. And I've learned a lot from that trip. My father said so many things that no one in the family could have told me. Even if I, I had an opportunity maybe to sit down with my uncle or to sit down with my aunt, no one could have said things that my father said to me. I needed to sit down with him so that he can tell me those things. And because of that trip, I am who I am today. Let me translate what Apani is saying. Apani is the gentleman who is making videos on TikTok. And he started telling people that, guys, listen, it's important to know your father. If you have a chance to go and know your father, go and know your father. Don't listen to what people are saying about your father. Go and sit down with him. Have a conversation with your father. Learn a thing or two from your father so that you are going to fix certain things in your life. We hear people telling us what they want to tell us about our ancestors. Don't fall to that trap. Some of us, we are... A living proof of what ancestors can do actually in your life. So Apani kept telling people that mothers, please allow your children to be closer to your father, to their fathers. Allow your children to know their fathers. Because they are going to suffer when you guys are gone. And even if you are going to get married somewhere, but make sure that the child know who their father is. Make sure that they know their biological father. 
Because later on, these children are suffering because of they don't know who they are. When there is ancestral ceremony, they are talking to people they don't even know. They are introduced to say names that they don't even know. And later on in life, these children, they start suffering. So the gentleman who wrote a comment to Abani, he is telling Abani that, look, Abani, I don't know who my father is. My mom passed away without telling me who my father is. I can easily get jobs. Even if I quit a job today, I can easily get one tomorrow. But the problem that I'm having right now is that as much as I'm working, I don't know what I'm doing. There is no progress in my life. I get a salary, but I don't know what I'm doing with my money. So this guy, he is in a serious pain because he wants to know who is, who is his father. And his mom is late now, and she didn't give him the information that he needed. And that's the story of South African people. We are dealing with that a lot. I see other people in Africa, man, no matter how poor they are, but they are still growing up under a family of mom and dad. In South Africa, we are raised by single parents. And single parents have whatever problems that they are having with dads. And they decide to use children as a weapon. I know on the previous two episodes, you know, I have been connecting the importance of a goat and ancestors. And some of you guys, you might feel like maybe I was not even sharing a lot on the first two episodes. I understand. I'm a storytelling guy. I love to tell stories. And when I tell stories, I can, you know, put the message across easier and it can be more understandable. I was once that man who is talking to Abani because I grew up knowing my father, but I didn't want anything to do with my father because of what I was told from my mother's side. My father tried very hard to be closer to me, but I didn't want to be closer to him. And I made it clear that I, I, I didn't want to be in his life. And I didn't know how much it had until I sat down with him one night and he was like talking to me. And I understood the damage that I've done. But I was a child. I was acting according to the way I know my father is. And I felt how I felt because of what I was told about my dad. And I got the prophecy when I was down and out. I got the prophecy when I was staying under the bridge at Val. You know, sometimes your people will get closer to you when you are down and out. Just to show you that they still care. Just to show you that they are there. And they can change things. Only if you do things the right way. And if you don't do things the right way, your children are going to suffer because of what you didn't do. I'm saying this because of I have a 14-year-old daughter, and she also dealt with the same thing. She kept on competing, you know, in her school activities. And I remember one day when she was telling me that, you know what, I got position two, Dad. But, you know, I understand it wasn't my day. You know, the other girl was better than me. You know, they were doing this beauty pageant thing and she was a runner up and she was just consoling herself that the other girl was better than her and her day will come she will also win someday and when i looked into her eyes i i saw pain i know that she wanted to win so bad and i also realized that it wasn't only that she tried other sports but she was not winning she will go and do some, you know, school competition. She will tell us that, you know, we got number two. We got number two. I took her home. 
and now she's that proud girl who will you know send me a whatsapp dad i don't have data as soon as i send her data she sent me pictures with the trophy and i'm like wow i understand the power of our ancestors when certain things are not done proper you're going to suffer and the children are going to suffer also they are reminding you who they are and they are telling you that she is one of us and if you are a father and you don't fix it you are not fixing things your children are going to suffer my father was suffering where he was because of he didn't do things the right way and when I was down and out under the bridge, a prophet told me that whatever happened between your mom and dad is none of your business. Go and look for your father because he is waiting for you. He is suffering. The ancestors are punishing him because of the things that he didn't do to you or for you, rather. So I thank my mom for understanding. And I went there and I met my father. He was so excited. He said to me, look, I'm going to send you money. We are going to buy a goat. We will do the ancestral ceremony. Surprisingly, I didn't even invite people. People came to that ceremony. It was a success. Everybody was there. But I must tell you something, though. As I am talking about, you know, the connection between ancestors and the goat. After he, he sent me that money, we struggled to find a goat. We tried. We tried. Eventually, my uncle said, I will give you a goat. His wife said, there is nothing for free. She wanted me to pay. I did. And I quickly realized that life is not everyone who will be happy for you when ancestors are closer to you so that you can fix certain things in your life. Some people are not going to be happy. I was just super excited because of I got a gold from my family member. And after I got that gold and we did the ceremony, he sat down with me, the uncle, and he started telling me about the generation before them. And what he told me fulfilled the prophecy that I was told many years ago when I was young. He started breaking down everything layer by layer so that I can understand our ancestors better. I can understand how they used to do things back in the days. And I also understood why I was prophesied years ago about owning land and having livestock. And, and I also understood why it's important for a man to have livestock in the family. Why one should have, you know, kettles, why one should have goats, why one should have all this type of stuff. How they are also connected with your ancestors and connected to who you are as a person or as a man. Because when we were going up and down, searching for places where we can go and buy a goat, I've started realizing a lot of stuff that we are going up and down simply because of we didn't take care of our family livestock. Here we are now walking around there trying to buy a gold from another family. And my uncle was the only member who has a livestock. There were few. And that's why maybe his wife said, we cannot even give you for free. We want to sell it. You know, it's ironic. Years later, 
you found his children talking to me about certain stuff. And I'm like, yeah, that's what it is. Sometimes people will know what you have to do and they might not even tell you that they know. But it will take you 10 years what you were supposed to get in two years. But once you get what you have to get, as permanent is yours. No one can take it away from you. So this gentleman, you know, reminds me of that story. So our ancestors, guys, you know, they they show up when they want to show up. They show up when they want to show up. So when, when this gentleman is talking about that, I remembered that I was once there. The only difference is that I knew my father. But after, you know, I had a moment with him, after we sat down, we spoke about everything. You know, he started, you know, living his life. He became the happiest man because of he knew that he fixed what he was supposed to fix. And also I saw years later how my daughter was struggling with certain stuff. You know, I took my daughter to my father. You know, she met my father for the first time. I think she was like 12 or 13 when she met my father. You know, and they just connected so well. And I also made sure that I take my daughter to the mud house. Because remember, I was told that I should go and fix the mud house years later when I was under the bridge at Val. I made sure that I take my daughter there so that she will know that place. She will spend a the night there. And I also took my daughter to the gravesite where my grandmother is buried from my mother's side and also from my father's side. So these things are important. And if, if I can go a little bit deeper without talking too much about my daughter, I just want to share this. I think maybe it will help others because we are just trying to help online. I realized that before I decided to take my daughter home to meet my father and to spend a night at the mud house and to go and see where her great great parents, you know, were buried, she was struggling a lot. Obviously, spiritually, and they didn't know what to do. They had to take her to traditional healers and she was already wearing red and white beads and she was already wearing his pantla also. And she was still struggling. They didn't know what to do. They kept on trying different type of things so that she can find peace, but she was still struggling. And I just told her that, listen, I will come and, you know, pick you up. I will take you home. We didn't slaughter a goat. We didn't make a big ceremony there. Took her home. And I remember when I collected her, where she's staying, I was shocked to see that she's wearing red and white beads. No one in my family is wearing red and white beads. And I was shocked. You know, her mom said what she said. No problem. I'm like, okay, I'm here for my daughter. Let me just control myself, take my daughter so we can go home. We got home, we slept. The following morning, she was going to bath. And her red and white beads starting, started to tear, you know. They were like all over the floor now. On the day we were going, the one which was left on the neck, she just slept and when she woke up early in the morning, you know, those beads were everywhere on the, on the bed. So when we took the trip from Johannesburg to Limpopo, she had no red and white beads. They were all gone. No one removed them. They just... And I understood exactly that they didn't want her with those red and white beads. She went home, she met people at home, she came back, and she never had any problem again. 
And when she is sending me pictures with awards and stuff like that, I know that, you know, our ancestors, man, when you don't do certain things, you know, they, they make your children suffer also. And till this day, till this day, they haven't taken her to a traditional healer, you know, she is no longer that person that you hear them telling me that, you know, we had to go and spend the night in the hospital, but the doctor doesn't know what's the problem. She will be admitted. She will be there. They have to put her to the oxygen machine. And she will be discharged. We don't know what's the problem with it. But ever since I took her home, she's that girl. She is playing netball. She is running. She is doing all the type of stuff that she, she want to do as a young girl. And I tell her, enter all the competitions. You want to sing, sing. You want to, you know, play your netball. Keep doing it. You know, just have that freedom.